explicit seasonality that's very apparent. And also some lag plots can sometimes show where we see strong correlations after a number of lags. And if that's repeating, we might also want to think about shifting the series along to see if, if there's co-movement after a period of time. So here we'll have a look at a plot of a purely seasonal process. That's just the, the sine function we looked at earlier. And let's go back and have a look at a plot of the uh, log Barclays closing price. Now, how do the ACF and the ACF of the difference process come in? Let's difference this first. Yeah, so there we see the differences. Fairly symmetrical except for the bursty behaviour off towards the end of the series. Okay, so in the uh, seasonal component, we see that the ACF does have this strong sinusoidal behaviour that we'd expect. Let's look at the ACF of the Marcus process once it's been transformed. And although there's a small amount of sinusoidal behaviour, we see most of it's been cut off. And if we look at it, the, uh, the process just does have this sharp cut off. Let's look at the PACF. Okay, so there are some values here that are outside the range in my expense. Another thing to consider is month plots, but in doing month plots, we need to have a, an idea behind frequency first. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you how I did it this year, but uh, I had a frequency measure for the time series, and then looking at a month plot of that, I can see almost perfectly the sort of structure that we've got here. Let's try, try the same for the Barclays process. So here we see Barclays price data, and you could infer that there's some sort of shifting in the uh, in the app. Another technique would be to look at lag plots. So if we look at the lag plot. And here we've got the original time series and then at lag one, the original time series can hit at lag two. And this is just for a, um, white, the white noise process. We see that there's no correlation, everything here is set about fairly randomly. Whereas if we look at the seasonal component, okay, here we see straight away that what we've got is a, um, a structure that varies depending on the, on the lag between the original time series and the shift. Looking at a lag plot of the um, Barclays share price, there's nothing here that's strongly away from random structure. So we can't say that any one particular lag dominates another. Looking for the example time series. Okay, here we see that there's a trap lag one. At lag two, there does seem to be a negative correlation between the process and where it is at lag two. At lag three, possibly positive, but not much in it. And then just seeing that being replicated, so at lag five here, something a little more positive, then it's just not possible to, to pick out any structure here. Let's try to do that with the lag plot at greater lags. Okay, so we see something positive. Um, negative correlation, positive possibly, and then we're just not picking it in anything strong there.
I'm doing that again at like 30 now. Again, nothing for certain. Okay, something that I sidestepped was the issue of how to identify the the frequency for the seasonality. So the seasonality can be implied by the frequency. And that's something that we used to, with the month plots here, just to pick out that seasonal component. One way to do it is with a, with a function called spectrum. Spectrum gives us the raw periodogram and also it gives us the flexibility of the smooth periodogram, an approximation to the spectral function, which tells us that frequency which corresponds to a certain level of variance. So looking here at the random noise, we see that pretty much all of the variance is explained across the frequencies. There's no tendency for it to be more greatly explained at certain frequencies than others. Whereas if we look at Barclays data, and here it's a smooth peri periodogram, we can see that that there's certain frequencies and multiples of it where, where the time series variance is more explained. And particularly, we can ignore right at the beginning here where it's saying that at, at close to zero frequency, but we do see that there are certain frequencies that correspond to higher explanations of the variance that might be expected of, say, an average process. Let's look at this season component, and there it's even more clear. So here we're seeing that there's a strong structure where the where the variance is being explained by certain frequencies stronger than others. Component the the spectral estimate really does just show us the seasonal structure that we're observing. Let's go back and look at Barclays again now. So here, quite similarly, we are seeing that there is some frequency and seasonality involved in the process. Looking at the example time series, we see that certain frequencies give us high, higher explanations of the variance, and they correspond to different lags in the time series. Next question would be, OK, we've identified seasonality, perhaps by using this connection, but how do we estimate what it is? Let's look here at the example time series at frequency 1 now. So that's a plot with the frequency defaulted to 1. I've just set a span here in order for us to be able to see the, the way the spectral function works. Having identified the seasonality as being present, the next stage would be then to estimate it. We can estimate it using a function such as STL. STL fits a, a local regression to remove the trend, and then it fits a seasonal harmonic function using a window set by the frequency of the series, and then what's left is the remainder process. We do need to know the seasonality in advance in order to give that to the STL function. Um, Alternatively, we can estimate using seasonal arena processes. But again, we need to decide the seasonality parameter before. One way to do that is to use the spectrum function. So here, if we look at the spectrum of our example time series, looking over the last interval, say, we can count the number of peaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, let's say seven peaks, four, four possibly. Um, in an interval of 0 0.1 for the for a time series set at frequency of 1. And then what we need to do, I won't go into the underlying theory, we do 5 times the number of cycles to give us an estimate of the frequency. So we said um, six, uh, 7 or 8, so 7 or 8 times 5 gives us either 35 or 40. Let's work with 35 for now, and we put that into the STL function, so we just put in our time series, setting its frequency at 35, S window equals periodic, it's just an option that's set there, and that's telling us that the, um, the process